need to disturb her. You see, I'm a dancer with Mr. Whitney's oh, dance I company. Oh, I thought your face looked familiar. Yes, well, when I was here the other night, I'm quite sure I left a small change purse. Could I trouble you to look for it? I don't remember seeing any purse. Oh, well, it's, it's really very tiny. I mean, it's so small, it could have fallen behind the, the cushion of the couch. Um, the only thing is, it wouldn't matter too much, except that there's a valuable ring that, that my boyfriend gave to me, and, well, you understand. Oh, sure. Wait here, I'll check. Thank you. Uh, is this where you were sitting? Uh, yeah, right there. Mr. Whitney, I told you that we need time to file a flight plan. Well, why haven't you done that already? Well, with the strike and all, things are taking a little more time. Look, I don't want to hear any more excuses. Just get us into the air as soon as possible. Yes, sir. We'll do our best. Man, why does everything have to go wrong all at once? What's the hurry now? We don't have to see those dancers until tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, yeah. Oh, uh, Spencer, come on over here. Yes, sir. Um... First thing in the morning, I want you to call both the Monticello newspapers and well, I'll tell them I'll be making a statement in a couple of days. All right, I'll take care of that, sir. Don't answer any questions. Don't tell them where I am or what I'm doing. You got that? Perfectly clear. All right, then I'll give you a call in the afternoon and let you know if there's anything else I want you to do. Oh, uh, there is one other thing you can do. I think you should go home. I'm sure Geraldine and Chrissy are afraid to be alone. Yeah, that's a good idea, Spencer. Why don't you do that? Go home and reassure the ladies that you're going to protect them, you and uh, that little gift I gave you. Yes, sir. Jackets, what's that mean? Well, I've never seen his face, Calvin. I couldn't describe him. Except by what he was wearing, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, both of us spotted him the opening night of the Whitney Dance Company, and Val says she's seen him a couple times since. But I haven't seen him for two days. So maybe he's decided I'm not his type after all. <laughs> well, I can't imagine that. But uh, if you do see him again, why don't you give me a call? I mean, maybe I can at least find out who he is. You know? Thank you. I will. Well, gentlemen, I'm in business for myself now, and I really would like to get up early, so... 
Well, Kelly, why don't you see the lady home, and I'll get the check. No, look, yeah, we ain't about to get a joke. No, 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 look, it's really early. early. It's on me. It's fine. Next time will be your turn, and I assure you I will pick a more expensive place than this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, why don't you both walk me home? No, I kind of think you two can manage alone. Anyway, I think I'm going to stay and have another cup of coffee today. Don't brood over it. Matter of fact, I'll have uh, another cup of coffee and uh, rice pudding, but uh, roll the whipped cream. <laughs> okay. All right, wake up. John, I need an RP, no snow. Here it is. Yeah. Five stars in the Monticello News. Oh, maybe four stars. So oh, good, sit, sit at the counter to get the right atmosphere, you know. It's uh, uh, great, the best corned beef in town, you know? Cliff, I think you should have gone to Sid's. Oh, no, Sid's too expensive. No, I mean, it's not the right atmosphere. It's got better corned beef here. Well, you've all been to Sid's, haven't you? Mm-hmm. I wish we were there now. Well, you know, Missy works there as a waitress. Really? See, that's what I was telling my friend Calvin Stoner about... Well, you know Calvin Stoner, don't you? Yeah. Right. Well, I was telling him about uh, the date that I had with Mitzi, and I said something sort of dumb. And if you repeat it, I'll never speak to you again. Please, not again. Well, it isn't really what you'd call a date. It was more like Cliff grabbing me and hauling me to the opening. He didn't even know my name until the first act curtain. Real caveman tactics, huh? <laughs> well, it works every time. And I forgive him. You forgive anybody tonight. You're in such a good mood. <laughs> yeah, you were really into the play tonight, didn't you? I just wish I were in it. <laughs> I'll bet you were sitting in the audience looking at the stage wishing you were up there playing the part of Julie. Laura. Laura. I love theater more than anything else in the world. More than chocolate chip ice cream? Oh, <laughs> How many plays have you been in? You count high school? Sure, why not? One. Well, look, there's nothing wrong with having a dream. My dream is to be a Supreme Court judge. As long as you can support yourself till your dream comes true. The real world says you have to eat and pay rent. Uh-oh, sounds like Julius here is a practical type. Uh, yes, also very industrious. He'll probably be a millionaire before he's 35. You know, speaking of Calvin Stoner... I didn't know we were. Well, I was just thinking that, uh, you know, Mitzi ought to talk to his wife. She's in show business, too. Thank you for saying, too. But all I'm really doing right now is waiting tables. And just waiting. Uh, at least it's a living. For now. Not much of one. Hey, if I don't start getting better tips soon, I'm going to be in big trouble. I gotta be out of my apartment in two days. Have you checked the prices of apartments these days? Oh, yes, I have. Even the tiniest studio costs a fortune. But you have such a great place, Steve. Yeah, but it's not mine. It's just a sublet. Hey, 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 Dixie, come on. Let's get some food up, okay? Sure thing, Cliff. If you can light a fire under that cook. Come on, let's go, John. Wake up. I'm away. Uh, these people are high class, you know? Give them the best... Well, let's give them the uh, filet of chopstick. Steve, have you ever considered um, sharing a place? Well, I really don't know but anybody in town that well. You know me? I mean, would you want to? Like, Steve, I saw this terrific two-bedroom apartment on Summer Avenue. It's great, but it's more than I can afford. But with two people, I, you got to see this place. You don't have to say anything <laughs> Just think about it. Uh, well, they do say that two can live as cheaply as one. Uh, but they were talking about a man and a woman, my dear. I tell you what, I'll take a look at it, okay? okay. It might not be such a bad idea. Well, hello. Mm. Hi. Bye-bye. the record, but I gotta satisfy my curiosity. I assume this is about Carlo Crown. Carlo Crown, alias Collier Wells. I wonder why you let him go. Now look, Chief, you're making two assumptions. One, that uh, Crown was Collier Wells, and two, 
But I released him. You know very well it was him. You've had nothing but that cat burglar on your mind since you've been in town. You had him in your hands, but you let him go. I did better than that. I had him handcuffed. Well, then why? Look, Chief, whoever broke into the Whitney mansion took nothing except a chance. I heard he got away with $250,000 worth of jewelry. Yeah, but he also returned $250,000 worth. What does that mean? If what would have happened if we had got him in court, he would have got nothing but a sharp rap on the knuckle. We can't take that into consideration. Chief, if I, if I were sure it was Crown, I wouldn't be worried, but if it was Collier Wells, well, there would have been repercussions. What do you mean, extradition? Well, I think there's a good chance that we would have been asked to send him overseas to face certain charges. I wanted to save her some paper. Oh, baloney, you were trying to save Carlo Crown and his girlfriend. Chief. You know what your problem is? You're an incurable romantic. Everything you've done in this town proves that. You don't really like that, do you? It doesn't go with the badge. What's this? You're gonna take my badge? I think I'd do that over a friendly drink. If I was gonna kick you out the door, I'd kick you out the door of my office. So, this is just a friendly calling on the carpet. Let's just say this is a friendly reminder that romance is fine in its place, but its place is not in my department. Okay. Tell me something, Chief. If you had been in the situation, what would you have done? I don't know. Maybe I would have done the same thing. Don't you quote me on that. absent-minded in a robbery-prone neighborhood. It sure doesn't. Well, can I offer you a nightcap? Sure, something in blue. <laughs> Sorry, no blue. Oh, it's got to be blue. That's the color of my pajamas. Oh, that's right. You haven't seen my pajamas yet, have you? No, and uh, I think I can wait. Thank you. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Uh, listen, it's late and you're tired. Uh, let's get the nightcap. I'll say goodnight and let myself out, okay? Wait, Kelly? Yep. Something's different in here. That box was on the chest when I left. Are you sure? I'm positive. I remember looking for something and then setting it down over there. Well, is there anything valuable in it? Well, I think um, a little cash. There's your cash. Wait, I keep cash in one other place. So are mine. This is not my mess. Check the money. It's all there. Uh, you're tired. Maybe your imagination's overactive or something. That drawer is not my imagination, and I did not leave this apartment this way when I went out. Maybe I better look at that lock. Huh? Does it look all right? It's new, but you see these scratches on the faceplate? Yeah. Looks like somebody picked it. I knew this was going to happen. I have been complaining to that super for weeks now. Those locks are worthless. Check the bedroom. Oh, my jewelry. It's 
all there. You sure? I don't have that much, Kelly. Well, um, maybe the guy uh, got scared off and left before he could take anything. Yeah, but somebody's been in here. Look at the bed. Yeah, you're right. Kelly, I'm scared. I know you are. You want to call the police? Just relax. There's nothing you can do. Better service than this. Just think about how nice it's going to be in New York when we get to the honeymoon this week. I told you, Angel, we're not going to have a chance to have a honeymoon. If I don't get a dancer and right quick, my company's going to have to fold its tent. Well, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. You shouldn't have hired her in the first place. So why is it that people who love to say I told you so always say, you know, I hate to say this, but I told you so? I'm sorry, but I'm glad you left. Well, I thought that little bit of news would give you some pleasure. The same way it gave Detective Tyler pleasure to tell me about it. You don't like him very much, do you? Is it because he likes me? There are other reasons. Such as? Well, I haven't told you this. It's something that I just found out very recently myself. But Tyler doesn't use his real name. Which is? Wilcox. Tyler is his middle name. Wilcox? Isn't that the name of the man that you worked for in Washington? Yeah. Fowler Wilcox was his father. What a coincidence. If it is a coincidence. Did he tell you that? No, no. Geraldine did. It seemed that she knew Fowler when she lived in Washington. I told you he was a big with the State Department. He was one of those guys that keeps a low profile that carries a lot of influence. Well, Tyler couldn't know that, that you worked for his father, could he? Well, if he knew that, then he would know that I am Jefferson Brown. But now you see why I want to avoid Tyler and why you should avoid him as well. come to this. No, it'll calm your nerves. But then perhaps you should be the one drinking it. My word, you're a nervous little thing, aren't you? Oh, I know I'm being silly. I, I just hate being in this house alone so soon after the last robbery. Oh, Chrissy, you're not alone. I'm here. Although I'm sure you don't consider me much protection. No, it does help to have someone here, Mrs. Saxon. Well, shortly you'll have someone else to comfort you. Spencer is coming back from the airport, and he'll be here any moment now. As for myself, I'm going to bed. And you, my dear, I advise to do the same thing. Uh, the truth is, Mrs. Saxon, when I was upstairs earlier, I got a bit frightened. I think I heard a noise. <laughs> I'm sure it's just your imagination. But if you should hear a noise again upstairs, it will only be me lurching to bed. Good night. Night. Gavin, why don't we just turn the light on? The door's shut. Because the light will shine underneath the door. Somebody may see it. Yeah, you're right. Are you sure you haven't done this before? Just keep your mind open. Sure if the watch is here or if it's the same watch Gunther had. We won't be until we find it. Well, well, what if it's not here? What if it's in Skylar's pocket right now? Don't be so pessimistic. Well, I just hope we're not risking our necks for nothing. Oh, thank goodness you're back. Is everything all right? Yes. No, I'm not sure. Where's Mrs. Saxon? She went to bed. Don't you? Why? Well, I thought I heard something when I was upstairs earlier. It scared me. Like what? Like a, a bumping noise or footsteps. I can't describe it, but, but it scared me. So would you go upstairs and, and check it out, please, just to make sure? 
All right. To make you feel better. Here. 